This is a short lecture on the statement of cash flows, which happens to be my favorite financial statement, uh, because it's very simple in what it's attempting to do. You're reconciling the beginning cash to the ending cash. Uh, we're going to be going over the indirect statement of cash flows here. There's two generally accepted accounting principle acceptable uh, formats, the indirect and the direct. The indirect is just a little bit simpler, but they're both doing the precisely the same thing. They're, they're reconciling beginning to ending cash. So first point is this is one of four financial statements that are required for general, by generally accepted accounting principles. Uh, the first being the account, the income statement, then the statement of retained earnings, balance sheet, and last is the statement of cash flows. I have these listed one, two, three, four because this is the order that we do them in. We have to do the income statement first in order to get the net income which we use on the statement of retained earnings. Uh, we need the ending retained earnings in order to complete the balance sheet, and we're going to use pieces of all three of these in order to complete <coughs> the statement of cash flows. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take all of the transactions for the year and we're going to break them up into our three transaction types. Operating transactions, investing transactions, and financing transactions. So I have those, you see the red letters OIF, uh, it's a good mnemonic, OIF, if you can remember that. Uh, and we're going to give examples on each one of these. So operations, and I've used here Smith's, which is a local grocery store uh, here in New Mexico. But you think, what kind of operations is Smith involved in? Well, they buy food from food companies, from farmers, and they resell it to their customers. So anything related to that is uh, their, their operations. And an example of an investing transaction, investing is just like it sounds. It's when you buy something because you want to make money on it. So how does Smith and Smiths invest? Well, they would buy cash registers because that's going to allow them to check more people out and make more money. So they're putting money out with the hope of making more money. So this is a longer term uh, type of transaction than just buying food and reselling it. And they're not in the business of buying and selling cash registers. They're in the business of buying and selling food. The last type of transaction is financing. So how does Smith's get its money to start in business? Does it sell stock? Does it borrow money from a bank? Does it sell bonds? You think of this from in terms of when you buy a car or a house. Your financing is when you take out a loan, take out a mortgage. Uh, the first section in the, the indirect statement of cash flows is cash flows from operations. We're going to be showing you an example here in a moment. But we're going to start with net income. And then we're gonna, we've got a new mnemonic for you to memorize, CLAD, C-L-A-D. The first is changes in current assets and liabilities. The uh, second is losses and gains. The third is amortization and depreciation. And the fourth is deferred taxes. So that's really all of the, the section of operations in the indirect statement of cash flows. So let's take a look at an Excel worksheet that I've put together. And this is XYZ Company. We're looking at its balance sheets for the years ended December 31st. And we have 2009 and 2008. This is a very, very simplified balance sheet. We just have a few accounts that we're going to be looking at. And that's going to simplify how we're going to do our statement of cash flows. Because the, the balance sheet is where we're going to start. That's how we're going to build our statement of cash flows. So take a look at the numbers here. There's cash. Uh, 1700 in 2008 it's 1450 so we have a change in cash of $250 what I've done is I've now laid out 2009 2008 these are all of our balance sheet accounts and I've laid them out and we're gonna look at the change in the in the balance sheet accounts and we're gonna address that as we we construct our statement of cash flows so first of all, let's start with cash. Those are the same numbers that were on the, the regular balance sheet that we saw presented. The net difference is $250. That actually goes down here in the very last section on the net change in cash. So our net change in cash is $250 for the year. Beginning cash is uh, $1,450. Ending cash $1,700. That would be the reconciliation section of our statement of cash flows. But let's get up and, and let's first concentrate on the cash flows from operations or cash flows out the door related to operations. And the, remember our what the slide where we looked at net income and CLAD, current assets, losses and gains, amortization and deferred taxes. So 
So first of all, the net income, which was a given. Uh, we're going to lay this out in a spreadsheet. So we have 2009, 2008. The first item in our cash flow from operations is $300 from net income. Well, we're actually going to drop that all the way down over in this column underneath retained earnings. And you'll notice that our total change in re retained earnings is $550. And I love the convention here. If it's a credit, I've uh, used a uh, uh, brackets around it to show that's a credit balance. So we had a credit balance of $1,000 at the end of the year of 2009. At the end of 2008, it was $1,550. So it actually the uh, the retained earnings decreased by five hundred and fifty dollars well three hundred dollars would have increased the uh, the retained earnings so I've dropped that over in my net income column and that is going to use up a portion of that retained earnings so we're going to address all of the numbers all of the change in these balance sheet accounts next let's concentrate on the changes in current assets and liabilities. Well, what are our current assets and liabilities that we have on here? We have cash, accounts receivable and inventory on the asset section, and accounts payable on the liability section. So let's address all of those changes. Here's our change in accounts receivable. It went from $300 to $600. So that is actually a use of cash. Our accounts receivable went up. We invested cash in accounts receivable. People owe us money. So that's a minus, and that has dealt with the entire change in the accounts receivable account. Went from 300 to 600, and then we had the use of cash that we drop over in our accounts receivable, and we total that up. So we're totally done with the accounts receivable account. We do the same thing on inventory and accounts payable. So we completely addressed the change in those accounts for the year. There's our inventory. It went from 3,500 to 3,000. So we actually, we sold inventory, we generated cash from our inventory. So there's the $500 increase in cash, and that is addressed to the entire change in the, uh, the inventory account. We did the same thing accounts payable. Accounts payable went up by $1,300, that's an increase in cash. There's our accounts payable. Next, we want losses and gains on disposal of, disposal of equipment, and that's going to be related to our equipment account and our accumulated depreciation account. So let's address those real quick. We're going to need some additional information. Uh, here's our equipment T account, our accumulated depreciation T account, and we can see the, the journal entries that have hit these accounts during the year. So here's our beginning balance in equipment of 4600, our ending balance of 4900. Accumulated depreciation, there's the beginning balance of 1400 and the ending balance of 1200. Well, we had depreciation expense of $300. And that's going to be part of our CLAD all 